<laughs> He's joking around. Who <laughs> feels so good when he jokes? What's this? And nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We are live. Welcome, folks, to the American Movie Podcast. If you've never been here before, welcome aboard. I go through movies, news, documentaries, Netflix series, and I do book reviews. And today I bring you this was one of the best books I've read this year, with no question. I started off with a countdown from nine because we're reviewing Nine Pints. Uh, written by Rose George, Nine Pints, A Journey Through the Money, Medicine, and Mysteries of Blood. This book, it was so accessible, so dense, um, and it was only 250, almost 300 pages, something like that. And it was just chock filled of so much information I did not even realize about blood. I had no idea about how important it was and the journey it took to get to just even be recognized as one of the like the top three diagnostic tests people or doctors use. So I think it's like examination they do and then they do um, imaging and then they do blood testing, physical examination. So amazing, amazing. Uh, so nine pints, that's how many pints you have running through your veins at this very moment. Um, and it kind of goes through, it goes through like just the prominence of blood uh, transfusions and donations of blood. So people receive blood, I think every three seconds on this planet. So it's crazy. They have no idea like how to even make it. So they can like, I'm pretty sure they can 3D print a heart, but they can't make blood. They can't make this stuff. And if you get the wrong type, you die. So it's like there's several different types. Some are universal. Some are very elegant and can't mix. And you die if you get the wrong ones. And it's made up of... This is when I knew she, she's a wonderful writer. And Rose has a cool perspective. Um, and she goes into... I'll get into it. But So she expounds about the iron in our blood and how it is... It's actually from the death of supernovas that have happened throughout our universe. All the iron on this planet that's in us were made from stars or are from we're we're the recipients from stars. So just that like that's page one. I was just blown away at it. I was like, oh, Rose came to play today. Hitting us with hard stuff. So so yeah, she talks about, you know, blood types, um, how scarce it is, and then because it's got a it's got a shelf life. It can only last for so long. Um, and she mostly, one of the biggest takeaways I noticed is that when you, the incentive structure. So you get um, unwanted donations when the incentive structure is used uh, for monetary gain, mostly. Most people wanted a thank you. And most people were happy with a thank you after they got donations. And this was crazy to me because it was actually, this was a really moving and touching book. Like it's an emotional book, man. Like some of the stuff is jarring. Some of the stuff is just, you come back to ground to level ground and you're like, Oh my God, I can't believe this is actually going on or these tactics or thoughts or theories were actually practiced on people. And several people were, uh, the recipients of these, uh, just heinous, um, heinous practices that were used for monetary gain because they were privatized. So when you privatize something like that and you don't actually just have it donated, a lot of stuff happens, man. A lot of deviant deviant behavior and a lot of just uh, fraud pretty much. So so she goes into your, like our single pint or whatever, our pints and how special it is and how different it is. And there's so much um, critical information that you can find within our blood. So you run like diagnostic scores and stuff like that. And yeah, the incentive structure was one of the biggest things to take away from this book is just like, um, you should just donate and have very little expectations. One heartwarming, um, spot in this book was you, if you donated, you got to know the name of the person and they got to write you a letter back saying, thank you. And I was like, oh my God, that is amazing. So there was two or three stories within that. And it was like, just people being grateful for the donation of this stranger, this goodwill, and then they they receive this letter, and it was just very touching. It was a really touching. Just she's a good writer, man. She's an excellent, wonderful writer. 
Um, also goes into transfusions, how those came about, and how they just started. Uh, they just started doing it on animals and dogs, and finally, after several times, people are like, "This is quackery. There's no possible way this is going to work." And then finally, um, they started to get it right, and like five of ten people didn't die after they transfused some of this stuff. So they're like, "Hey, maybe you're onto something, man." I think his name was William. I don't want to. I think it was Blundell. Um, and then they go to the heinous practice of there was this contaminated uh, product that was blood plasma. So she goes into the yellow stuff. That's a chapter and it's blood plasma. And it was contaminated blood with hepatitis C and HIV. And several people who were either hemophiliacs or needed blood plasma um, got this tainted, this tainted product. And there was this horrible story about this young boy who got it. And he passed because he was hemophiliac and he was just getting this this plasma and he it was a tainted it was a tainted product and he just passed and I was just like, Oh my god, why are these people not in jail? <sighs> so that was um all these all these chapters were kind of tough, man. Like <laughs> and all of them were pretty tough and so tough in different ways. So um I'm not one who is squeamish by any means, but then she goes into, she goes into your specific blood, how important it is, scarcity, blah, 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 and then blood plasma, but then she gets into leeches, the, uh, I can't remember the exact, uh, chapter title of it, but it's like, oh yeah, this most singular and valuable reptile, and I didn't know these bad boys, okay, this is gross, so, um, they can get up to 17 inches long, and uh, she visits this, it's this place in Wales called Biofarm, and it's just this leech farm, and leeches used to be pretty prominent, and now they're used for like cauliflower ear, and they've used for uh, like skin folds, and possibly when they need more time on surgery, so they can bring blood to the surface, I believe, or something like that, so there was a lot of useful stuff leeches can do now, kind of, in certain like weird circumstances, it's kind of like a uh, game time decision when they when they decide to use leeches or not, but they're actually kind of scarce and they're getting they're a lot of pharmacies used to have them and people used to think it was detoxifying and all this stuff and it was just a very gross chapter man it gave you heebie jeebies and you're just like all right let's read fast read fast and uh so I also didn't know um it's like she visits one of the last uh, of like the six last leech farms or whatever. And they have 10 stomachs, 32 brains, and nine pairs of testicles. And they have these like scalpel-like teeth that are like triangles. And they're so precise. They're more precise than a scalpel, exclaimed Rose. Um, and another, they like, one thing that they found is that they might, like they would lose them. So they like migrate in and out of the body. So like they'll go to your shoulder and then they'll go into something else, wherever inside the body means. Um... So yeah, that was a gross chapter. Like one of the hardest chapters I've re like read in my life. Like it's just so gross. Like you just uh, make sure your feet aren't hanging off of anything or touching the ground. Um, and then she goes into uh, uh, this one was really tough to read too. It was just uh, she goes into feminine products in India and how much of a luxury it is. And uh. And yeah, that one was tough to read too, just because this there was so much um, stigma next to it as well. And then the very uh, the very final chapter is where they go into uh, Code Red, and Code Red is this person pretty much on their deathbed, and they're trying to save this person's life, and they need blood, and they just need to keep them alive in the golden hour, which is around thirty minutes within thirty minutes, and get them to the hospital so they can actually get blood, and they uh. I didn't know this, but they performed, uh, it was like a, oh man, I'm, I'm missing the thorough, thorough costume. And it's where they open up the chest and then they massage the heart. So the heart can start beating again. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man, they're doing this on the street of London. Um, because this bicyclist got hit by a bus and it's just like, Jesus, dude, this is intense. So it's one of the most intense books that I've read in a long time, man. It's outstanding, and there's so much useful information in there too. So it's like, oh, and and she brings a cool perspective as well. Like, there's so many things that I had not 
realized or even thought twice about. So it was really useful in that manner. It's such a short read. And I think um, definitely want to donate blood now. Definitely. Like I was reading this. I was like, God, man, this thing is making me, I got to do it now. Like I'm a bad person if I know all this information and uh, I don't go do it. So now I'm going to go do it. But, uh, but yeah, so that's nine pints. It's an outstanding book. You can get it on audible link is down in the description. And if you want to visit our, uh, Amazon store, it'll be in the Amazon store after this is uploaded. I'll put it, um, and after on the live stream or whatever. So it's an outstanding book, nine pints, check it out, short read, dense information, um, cool perspective, wonderful writing, insane stories that are just gut wrenching and eye opening all this at the exact same time. So I highly, highly recommend it. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to review us on iTunes and Spotify and Google Cast and any other uh, marketplace where you get your podcasts. So, because that helps greatly. And if you have read any cool books or seen any cool documentaries or just want to reach out or follow me on social media, feel free, folks. So, until next time, this has been Matthew Benjamin with the American Movement Podcast. Bye, 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 bye. After all, someone has to pay for the uh, lap dances for the big guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's joking around. <laughs> yeah.